if it's not happening. Go away. Go away. Who are you telling go away? Uh, my husband's not being very nice, so I'm muting myself. Awesome. Tell Matt to suck my big toe. <laughs> okay. He's not being very politically correct. We'll just go there. Oh, well, I married one of those. So, Tammy, do you think it is her, have you checked her wording on how she presents stuff to people? Like copy or screenshot her conversations and stuff? Yep, I have. Oh my um, gosh. I think her and I both need to be having a problem. We do the five-step process and everything, and, you know, our invites just suck. We just don't get any kind of mo motion or action or something. I I don't know. We, we, we're we trying this new thing now. We watch the Melanie Mitro tapes, and we're trying one of her processes right now to see what happens. I will say my wording changed a lot. After the Florida retreat, Stephanie, um, not Stephanie, Summer talking. Mm -hmm. She doesn't say, like, the biggest one that stuck out to me is, like, whenever I sent someone to my Why Do I Coach video or to someone else's video that I know on Team Thrive or whatever. You live close enough, Sorry. I can come to the Heimlich if you need it. <coughs> Seriously? Granola is dangerous. Okay. But I always asked, you know, did you, did you like that or um, what did you think? <coughs> what did you think or something like that? And her wording is what part of my story resonated with you? What part of my story did you hear you in? <coughs> and I swear, I am like dying over here. Um, I swear that has been a game, <coughs> a game changer for me because... <coughs> Sorry. Stop talking, Tara. I breathe. I know. I'm trying. <coughs> I need to get this inhaler out. Um, she seriously made it like an altar call at church. <clears throat> like, I don't know if... I'll read it for you. Okay, thank you. So you can be quiet. <laughs> hey, guys. Um... So I actually wrote it down, and I've been using it because, like Tara said, it was just another approach. Um, so let me see where I put it. Okay. Basically, it's the follow-up. You know, so she said, I don't know if you're still interested in being home with your kids, removing the financial noose from around your neck. I don't know if you're still struggling to be your best for yourself and others, or if you're still searching for freedom for yourself, having the opportunity to inspire and share your journey. But if you're still interested in focusing on your health, your journey, then I'm here to help you get started and get you hooked up. But I need you to message me so that we can get started. I'll follow up. Like it was the emotional part. I don't know if you're still interested in everything I shared. I don't know if you're still interested in being home with your kids. What, whatever it is that your story is that you share, I don't know if you're interested in helping your, your family with its income and debt. I don't know if, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But if you are, then guess what? You have to act. I can't need to do it. So it was just a good way of saying that. And then um, I've already, you know, I've had a couple of people be like, yes, absolutely, I'm still here. So I said, oh, great. Since you're still interested and can relate with what I'm sharing, then would you give me a, a year? And now this is for people who are talking about coaching. So he basically set the expectation. You've got to take the first step. You've got to give me a year because this isn't a flash in the pan. This isn't a quick fix. 
So she said, I would love to share more with you and then you can ask questions and we can chat on the phone so that you can hear my heart and I can know how to better serve you. So already she's spoken to their heart. She's made them take action. She's made them commit. She set the expectation and she said, um, I want to serve you. So this is where the third party tool comes in and what we were talking about last week with making videos with each person because every one of our stories is different. And um, I posted mine. If you go to Made to Thrive, I went ahead and I put the five steps up there, like the things that you need to be focusing on, on every week and every month. And I made Melissa make a banner. But if you click on it, there's my video for coaching, which I've heard a lot of other coaches, like not on our team use. And I was like, oh, thank you. They're like, we just like how you presented it. It was very to the point. You were fun. You were um, no BS but great, like you weren't, la, 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 la. you had personality. So I was like, thank you so much, that's super cool. So I put that for anybody to use or use your own or use a different one. But if you use somebody else's, say, hey, this is my coach, Lauren, and she does a great, she does a great job of explaining what it is and it's the reason I became a coach, like her video, whatever. It doesn't have to be that nice or it doesn't have to be me at all. But the next step was I'll share a quick video with you that I made so that you can hear straight from me and learn more about coaching and the opportunity to strengthen your marriage, grow through adversity, and inspire others while having the freedom to be home and present. And then um, I said, once you've watched it, please ask questions and we can find a time to chat. As a mom, I would love to get to know you and hear how we are similar and can help one another. So, you know, I'm also saying, hey, I don't have all the time in the world. I am a mom. I want to get to know how you and I are very alike. So um, another exercise that Summer gave was get a piece of paper, you know, a big piece of paper and slit it down the middle and say how you felt before you became a coach or sorry, if you were a challenger, how you felt before you were a challenger and before you were a coach. So just to get back to those feelings of what they're feeling because we forget what it was like before you made that first step when you had all those questions before you'd had one success with weight loss or a transformation. What was that like? Cause you're talking to the Lauren of four and a half years ago, the Carrie of four years ago, the Nicole, the Cammy, the, the Tara, you're talking to that person. So you got to remember who they were, how they felt because we forget those emotions. Cause we're like, well, I just show up every day. It's normal for me, but it's not for them. Um, yeah. So that was really good because, like Tara said, she totally, you know, made a post, but the follow-up, if people have been silent, if people have said they're interested and they're not, was like, okay, so you said <laughs> this, but I don't know if you're still interested in achieving all those things that you told me. And really get, not snotty, but get deep with them and be like, I don't know if you want to strengthen your marriage. I don't know if you're really serious about what you said, but if you are, then you did it. Guys, it was seriously like, it's like I even told Summer at the retreat, I feel like I need Jesus again, and I have Jesus. Like, I don't need him again, but I feel like I need him again because you're like calling me to my, like, it was like the end of a sermon. I don't know if any of this resonated with you or if you heard something that is part of your story and my story, but... It was all about her servant heart and servant attitude, which was huge for me because that's what that's my gig. Um, especially after reading The Go Giver, it was like huge for me. And so, um, just changing my wording and um, also that's been my follow up on my challengers too. Um, you know, hey, like the ones that have fallen way off. You know, hey, you told me six months ago that you wanted to achieve this. Is that still your goal? Or do you have a different goal? Let's chat. When's a good time to get together? And then I've been able to kind of pull that in to it. So, yeah. Thank you. I like, it. I just posted kind of my script back and forth for you guys from one of the conversations I had. So, obviously, if it says, great, you know, since you are interested, she has said yes. If she had said no, I would have been like, well, screw you. No, I wouldn't. Um, 
I don't know. It's just helped my confidence more, just knowing that, like, flipping the mindset to serving them and holding them accountable to what they already said they wanted to achieve. You're not putting things in their like they told you. So, um, anyways, I like it. I signed a coach this week and it was like super easy and fast just because I used that kind of wording. So, I mean, it was like, Oh, you said yes. Oh, oh well, wait, I got to find my link. I'm not used to. Yes. I'm used to notes. <laughs> um, so what I wanted to talk about on the mastermind today was some, okay. So, um, I found that we all have really big goals and we, we get excited about the, the beginning of the year. You know, the end of the year is a big push and we set these deadlines for ourselves and then we say, okay, last year sucked and we're racing it and we're going to move on to 2017. Great. A lot of things going on, but I want to focus on this. So then we set ourselves up for quarterly goals, weekly goals, monthly goals, whatever, but do we really hit them? And, um, so I, the most success that I personally have been able to share with other people is when we do small groups, you know, and it's about relationships and it's about the basics and it's about stuff like this, you know, we're hearing each other, we're sharing. And so I asked my coach, Stephanie, if I could join her in doing a um, new coach to diamond group and then star diamond group. Um, and so I did a questionnaire and everything And Nicole, if you want to be in it, just let me know. I know you've got crap going on, but it would be totally on your time. But, um, and she said, yes. And so what we're doing is we're doing this. Yeah. So if you haven't read this, you need to read it. I'm about to do a zoom yes. call on the first two chapters and, oh, wow, it's already broken. Wow. I'm power. What, what a crappy book. Okay. Um, <laughs> And it's really powerful to just think about how you have to redefine your year, not in, um, I'm going to hit this goal this year because it's, it was so true. Most companies have the most amazing fourth quarter and that's what you hear all about because they set deadlines, they set expectations and they've got to, they've got to make up for everything they didn't do in the first three quarters of the year and that last quarter. And so everyone is on board. Everyone's working harder, everyone. And he's and this, you know, the concept with Brian and Michael is, why do we do that to ourselves? Why can't we be productive in 12 week increments? Why can't we set goals and really say, I'm going to be focused for these 12 weeks. And if I have a bad week, great. I have another week to go, but I'm not going to like beat myself up. But something that really stuck out to me that I wanted to talk about. Um, with, I mean, even with new coaches, your success and your failure is determined by what you had achieved over the course of the year. Bull crap. <laughs> I think your success and failure is achieved by what you do every single day. Did you show up today? Did you show up tomorrow? Did you show up that week? Not that whole year sucks. So I'm a failure and I need to give up. And that was really interesting. He said most people judge their success or failure by what they did in an, a complete year instead of breaking it up. And so the thing was, we, we mistakenly believe that there's a lot of time left in the year and we act accordingly. We lack a sense of urgency, not realizing that every week is important, every day is important, every moment is important. Ultimately, effective execution happens daily and weekly, not yearly. And so that right there is what I'm going to talk about with new coaches, but what you can talk about with anybody, what you can get back to, what you can focus on with your own goals is it's what we do every day. Not did we, were we awesome in 2016? And if we were great, if we weren't, then we suck. So every week counts, every day counts, every moment counts. And we need to be conscious of the reality of that and stop thinking in terms of the year, but think in shorter time frames. So, you know, it's great that we break up the year into quarters and everything. It's great. And he said that that's really um, purposeful. Um, but we need to have a sense of urgency in those weeks and not just be like, you know, by March, I'm going to achieve this, but do nothing to get there. So, um, it was, it's a mindset shift. So that's ultimately what I'm talking about with these kind of baby coaches today is your mindset that you don't have all year. Like don't set goals for September. Set goals for right now and focus on those and then celebrate them. 
And that was the really cool thing was everybody needs a break. Everybody needs a vacation. Everybody needs to stop and assess what did I do well? What did I not do well? And change it. Not go all year being frustrated, not moving forward, and then go, well, I wasn't good at that, so I'm not going to do it anymore. But breaking it up to say, this week I did that really well, but how can I improve upon it? Or this week I really didn't even focus on inviting, or I should probably do that. And then make course corrections in smaller increments, not month to month to month, but every week to week to week and day to day. And I really liked that. It was such a simple thing. But it was the mindset, um, creating opportunities for breakthrough, and this is what I highlighted, harvesting today's opportunities and also planting essential seeds necessary to ensure continued success. So I was like, Duh. anyway, I know, some of you have already read this and you're like, this is, this is um, simple stuff, Lauren, but Amazing. I just think that there's a lot of, co there are a lot of coaches who come in here and I had a meeting with a new coach on Monday and I said, so I need to know your goals. She said, my husband's gone for 30 days. I go, sweet, you could hit diamond in 30 days. She goes, ooh. And I go, it's all about your mindset, your behaviors, and your goals. You don't have kids. Your husband's gone. You really can if you're focused. And so we broke it down, and she can see how that can happen. So hopefully in breaking it up into four weeks and really saying, I can do this. You know, because not to compare, but I said, people have hit diamond, and Cami was already prepared to do it. She did in a week. Um, she, she came back, and she knew the people that were going to sign up. But, and other people, the same thing. They'd already done the communicating before they signed up. I think Christine Dwyer, one of the first coaches in the network, she became diamond in two days. Um, but she knew the people she was going to sign up. Oh, hey, Matt. Um, so, that was sweet. But there are other people... Um, I spoke at Sarah Gobb's retreat last week, which was really cool and very needed for me to be surrounded by people. <laughs> and she said, um, her coach is Brandy Botts. Brandy was very upfront with her. She knew her personality. She also wasn't, a, wasn't afraid to share her goals. And she said, I'm going to need you to go diamond in 12 days. And I looked at Sarah and I was like, that's ballsy. And she said, she knew I could do it. And she instilled that belief in me. And then she helped me break it down. So if we just give our coaches these unrealistic goals and we're like, hey, if you just do this, 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 you can achieve your financial goal. And they go, I don't even know how to do that. You help them break it down into daily goals, weekly goals, and then say, okay, I really did that well, but I didn't really focus on this area. I really didn't focus on personal development and I really need to make time for that. Or I really didn't focus on sharing. I really didn't focus on my story. Really need to do that then you're helping them see where they're succeeding and where they're kind of not succeeding. And that also shows you what they like to do and what they don't like to do. <laughs> like, don't like to invite at all. Don't like it. But it's kind of necessary to grow. Um, so where was the last thing? The great thing about having a 12-week year is that the deadline is always near enough that you never lose sight of it. Love that. It provides a time horizon that is long enough to get things done, yet short enough to create a sense of urgency and a bias for action. It's human nature that we behave differently when a deadline approaches, hence the fourth quarter, like, ah! We procrastinate less, we reduce or eliminate avoidance activity, and we focus more on the things that matter. So, it says, um, uh, bit, 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 bit. I heard it is, I like this. With the 12-week year, that will never happen again. Wait, what will, happen? What will never happen again? Oh, they give up on their goals before yes. the end of the year. You will never give up on your goals. Um, that's that whole, you don't change the goal, you just change how you get there. So with the 12-week year, you'll never give up on your goals. Every 12 weeks, you get a fresh start. It's basically a new mini year. So if you've had a tough 12-week year, you can shake it off, regroup, and start again. If you've had a strong 12-week year, week year, it's hard to say, you can build on that momentum. Either way, every 12 weeks is a new start. So, and just like at the end of a calendar year, every 12 weeks you take a break. So again, we're teaching our coaches that we're not doing this to kill ourselves, that this is something that's cyclical and you want to stop and you want to take a break. Some people never take a vacation. They never take a break. You're basically saying, I want you to take four or three. I want you to celebrate. 
reload, regroup, and then start again. It says it might be a three-day weekend or a week-long vacation. The important thing is that you take time to reflect, regroup, re-energize. So I really feel like this is just a good um, Bible, if you will, for new coaches to see how they can accomplish their big goals. If, you, if you're working with someone who's like, this is my really big goal. I want to be a full-time coach. I want to come home. You go, okay. Before I make false promises to you, before I tell you, you've got this without a plan, let's think about the mindset of putting your year that, that you've already promised me from that script we just went over, that you're going to break up your year into these 12-week increments. And you're going to focus on those five steps at the top of our <laughs> banner. You know, you're going to have 20, 20 fines a week. You're going to invite, oopsie. How did I log in? Oh, it says I logged in from another device. Stop it. It's possessed. Um, so you're going to say, okay, the way that you do that is we're going to take those five things at the top. This is how you invite. This is how you share. You're going to share with 20 people or add 20 people to your contact list this week. You're going to also invite 10 people to a challenge group a coaching opportunity and here's how and so the script is there and put it up there and here is the third-party tool that you know all of that stuff is right there but I feel like it's just a very simple way to say to find out who your coaches are what their goals are then help them see how it's possible to break up their goals into bite-sized pieces take breaks so their families are happy, their husband's not, they're constantly working. You know, you're, you're working on all areas of your life. And you're taking care of the personal development. You're taking care of the finds and shares. You're taking care of you taking care of yourself and sharing your story. And you're taking care of the inviting process. So all of those, those four steps, four vital behaviors, excuse me. So that is what... Um, that is kind of like the, the mindset that I think produces productivity. And if you have something to add, um, I'd love to hear it because I didn't know I was leading this Zoom call at 11 until like last night and I got up and I read these chapters. So I'm like, <laughs> you got some things to add to that. So if he's like, hey, we have a Zoom every Wednesday and I can't do it tomorrow. And I was like, super. 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 <laughs> Twyla and I listened to that um, book on the way to and from Florida. Mm -hmm. We finished it on our way back. Like, we just kept, like, pausing it, and we were like, oh, my gosh. Like, we can do this. We can do this. Like, that book is amazing. And Josh Coates's, um, Coates's <laughs> newest training is based on that book, but it's the one-week month. Yeah. So, but what you're – normal goals are for the month into one week and you just set the bar of expectation higher for yourself and even if you miss it it's kind of like that whole saying if you shoot for the star or if you shoot for the moon you land on the stars so if you set that bar of expectation higher not only does your performance go up but your team's performance go up because the expectations they're seeing you run harder and they start they start matching your speed. And so like his goal, like one of his big scary goals this year is to write a book. And he goes, I wouldn't have had that belief in myself if I wasn't on the John Maxwell team. He's wrote over 80 books by this time. So I look at him and go, well, he's wrote 80. Surely I can write one. So when coaches are looking at you going, oh, I can never hit success club. Well, if they see... Like Lauren, she, I mean, she hits success club 20 <laughs> easy. So, oh, well, if Lauren can hit success club 20, then I can hit success club five. So, like, if you just keep putting the bar of expectation up for yourself, you are raising the bar for your coaches just not even by even having to verbalize that, just being in front of the race and being the speed of the pack and – that was huge for me because I was getting frustrated with my coaches not wanting to run with me and not hitting success club. And I'm like, well, hello, I haven't shown up and done that. I haven't shown them it can be done every single month. So why would I expect it from them? Like I haven't done that. 
So now it's a non-negotiable and I have set my bar of expectation higher and I voice what I'm doing every single day to my team, how many invites, how many, and it's an obscene number because I want them to realize if Tara can do 20 invites, I can do five. If Tara can do one business opportunity contact a day or whatever, I can do one a week or whatever the case might be. So that's what I got out of that book and also hearing Josh talk about it. Setting up the bar of expectations and just, I mean, we hear it over and over, lead from the front, lead from the front, you're the speed of the pack. But for whatever reason, that book is what made it make more sense to me. And then hearing Josh go more in depth on that with his training really connected all the dots for me. Um, on the flip side, to be like the devil's advocate, you can hit success club 40 and people still not hit success club. Oh, I know. It has to be. Okay. Cause I'm just like, yeah. that's been no. something I've been totally upset about is, um, I've never missed a month. No, I'm not patting myself on the back right. or anything, but people have to want it. And, um, it has to mean something to them. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to use biz as a, as, and I'm gonna, I think I might actually post this on our team page as like an extra training because it's, it's good stuff. So hi, I made threat. Um, I'm going to use Elizabeth Mack as an example. And there, there are a lot of Elizabeth Macks on our team and she's precious and she became a challenger and she had crazy results. And the kid shows up every day and posts just her with an inspirational quote and she's inspiring people and not doing anything else and then sharing her life. Like sharing how she's a mom, sharing about Bible study, sharing about Christmas, like festivals. It just is exactly what you want to see as a coach. She's not blasting people with Beachbody. She had no intention of ever selling anything. She just loved this stuff. Her husband loves this stuff. And um, all of it, you know, and I said, hey, oh my gosh, you're coaching? And let me know if you need help. Like, because I know with your results, people are coming to you and they're asking questions. I can see it in the comments below your posts. So let me know if you want to talk about, you know, kind of maybe the next step. And she says, I'm not interested. I said, okay. That's great. So, um, sound familiar, Carrie? You know, no. <gasps> uh, sorry, my daughter's being ugly, and that's why I've been crying, and that's why I'm asking for prayer. Is I need a new one? Okay, and I don't mean that. This is recorded. Um, <laughs> it's been a hard year. It's been the hardest year of my life. Um. So anyway, Biz said, oh my gosh, I am able to share this with other people. This is so fun. I'm having so much fun sharing. And now she's excited about it. She has so many people coming to her and asking questions. And um, it's been really awesome just to see her get excited. But it had to be on her time. It had to be her story. And it had to be you know, all of that stuff. So, you know, it's, so, and now she's like at success club nine, you know, this month. And she's like, Oh my gosh, this is so amazing. I could actually give people solutions. And so that is what you want as a coach. They're going to be people who automatically join and they're like, this is what I want to do. I'm totally jazzed about it. I have all these goals. And then there are other people who it takes a little bit longer maybe to realize what they want out of this because first they wanted to see the results in themselves. Great. That is awesome. Um, sometimes it's hard, though, when you're like a, come on, come on, come on, come on. Um, you know, now I've got my husband texting me. <laughs> okay. Don't cry. <laughs> um, oh, if it's your husband, you can go. We understand. I know. No, we've been going back and forth for a long time. Um, I'm not saying it's negative. I'm not saying that's why I'm crying. It's just about our time. So... Yes. Um, he needs to freaking get his butt home. It's been too long. I agree. Way too long. Who do I need to call? <laughs> I'm on it. I can give you some names. <laughs> <laughs> they heard from me too. No, I'm kidding. I haven't contacted anybody. Um, but anyway, it's really cool as a coach to see how everyone progresses differently. And that's our stories. You know, some people, some people are going to be those rocket ships and some people are going to be those, for lack of a better term, turtles. But it doesn't matter what animal, what thing you are. 
you're getting there at the time that you're supposed to, and you're getting, as long as you realize the opportunity in this and the fact that you can impact people's lives with your story, because Elizabeth is the best example I can think of right off the top of my head. I know there's many, many more, but she's in my newsfeed all the time because she's one of my coaches. It's just really cool to be like, dang, look at your legs. Dang, look at your muscles. Like, and then when she posted before and after picture, I'm like, oh my gosh, Biz. To see it side by side, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And then to see the comments of people like, like all of us, like moms who are just like, wow. If you hadn't posted that and shared that with me, I wouldn't have really thought about it because I've watched your journey. So now I only think of you as this person. I never thought of you as bad or dumpy or whatever you want to say, but gosh, I can just see how much happier you, happier you are. And it's funny because we think, I'm good, I'm good, but then I can be better. Not because of the way I look, but the way I feel and the way that people perceive me and the way I carry myself. And I was having a conversation with a lady today who said, Beachbody is just all about Shakeology. And I said, whoa, you can get the all access pass without Shakeology, but why would you want to? So we went into it and she says, my husband's really hung up on the name Beachbody because it's, the company is just all about how you look. And I go, you really don't know the company. I can give you some things to look at. I can give you some pages to go to. The Beachbody Facebook page for one talks about transformations and read the stories. Don't look at the pictures. Um, really listen because she goes, I wish more coaches were like you. I go, then you only, you don't know enough coaches because I'm not the only one talking about these kind of transformations. I don't ever talk about, look how good I look, how good I feel. And so she was like, well, thank you for, you know, changing my mindset. But she's been so negative against the company because of the name. I said, it started at the beach. Like, it started at the beach with Tony Horton there at Muscle Beach, like doing silly videos. And these guys are from California. Hello. Aren't you glad it's not called Million Dollar Body anymore? I mean, for real. That's a step up, I think. So... <laughs> It's all about their perception and it's our job to change their minds because they see one thing and they develop an opinion immediately and they've got to see that it's more than that. So much more than that. Um, so anyway, my daughter just told me we don't have a relationship. That's super awesome. Love ya. Um, with that, <laughs> um, so anyway, I, I wanted to share this. They'll change in an hour. I promise. Their mood swings are like crazy. I've raised mm -hmm. four. They'll change when she wants something. Right. Um, so, but I think that comprehensively, it's really cool to see how you can help a coach who really wants to get started now kind of have the mindset of how to get started using this. And yes, it's on Audible. Ah, yes, it's on Audible. You uh -huh. can get the audiobook version. I just happen to have this and I wanted to have um, since I have to do it in a group and I'm going to teach on it or go over it, I wanted to highlight it. But I'm more auditory and I'll walk around and I can hear it. Hey. So having this to kind of break it up and set baby goals and then see how you did that week and how you did that month, my puppy's cute. Um, then using the steps at the top of our Made to Thrive page and that it gets your mind wrapped around that's what I have to do to grow is I actually have to share my story. I actually have to develop more contacts and I have to invite people. And then how do I invite? Well, there's a five-step process and there's a link to that. That's what it was. I had Melissa put the link to the five-step process in there. Make it your own. Make it sound like you and use a third-party tool, which is also up there. You can use mine. You can use somebody else's if there's one that resonates more with you. Um, maybe you have a full-time job and you know someone who has a great video talking about how they have a full-time job and they work their business. Um, or the little kids. I don't have little kids. You know, so you have, you have to juggle, juggle that. And then um, don't forget to celebrate. Celebrate everything that you learn, that you see, that you do, that you change, and then make changes. So that's what I wanted to share um, kind of and just go over today is how we can help our baby coaches, our seasoned coaches, whomever, kind of get out of that mindset that they have to set one massive, big, huge goal for the year. And if they don't achieve it, then they, they fail without looking at the various things that you can learn along the way and break up the year into 12-week years. 
Any Love other it. comments? Just a big fat hey. amen for me. I'm with you. Look at this meeting with no sleep is one of my goals. So, hey, I'm celebrating. <laughs> Yeah, three alarms set. One was clear across the room. That's awesome. See yeah, how dark it is here, though? I'm not used to this yeah. in Washington. I just want to sleep till noon every day because there's no light. <laughs> I hate it. It's okay. It's all good. I've heard that's really hard. I have sad really bad. We moved from here six years ago because of my cancer and because I have sad um, so bad. We stayed here. I didn't and now know. I've only been here four months and I'm back in that. And I'm my bait. My, Office is in the basement, so I feel like a mole. <laughs> you know, I'm just like, <laughs> he asked me last night, are you going to be able to handle this? And I said, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing what I can. I'm not, I'm not a happy camper here. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm going to.